Uh, my name is Tamitha Cruz. I'm the program coordinator here at the Center for Multicultural Education, and I would like to welcome you to our um, discussion today on uh, Christianity and um, its beliefs. And so, really great turnout today. So, kudos to you guys for coming out because it's going to be a really great discussion. Um, so first of all, I'd like to give a big thank you to uh, Leadership Studies uh, Director, Chairperson, uh, Jerry Perot. Um, she's in charge of the American Democracy Project. Um, and so, um, her and I have been working together on this project calling, uh, called uh, Talking with the Enemy. Um, we want to take the stigma away from that word enemy and kind of uh, encourage people to engage in dialogue. You can disagree with other people, but there's ways to do that in a respectful manner, and that's what we hope to get out of today. So, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you guys to our moderator, Betty DeBerg. Um, she's a professor for um, philosophy and world religions, so she will be manning today's session. So, thanks. Thank you, and welcome to this debate, which we hope is an example of civil discourse when people disagree with one another. I'm a professor of religion. Uh, we have two teams here with us today to debate an interesting question, and the question being debated is this. Are Christian beliefs damaging the world? Uh, the team answering yes to this question are the president and vice president of UNI's Free Thinkers and Acquirers Club, Trevor Buckman and Corey Derringer, to my near right. The Free Thinkers and Inquirers is a student organization for atheists, agnostics, skeptics, non-believers, or anybody who turns a critical eye on these matters. The team answering no to this question are the campus director and a student leader of UNI Navigators, Kyle Nelson and Taylor Hercock, to my far right. Uh, Navigators is an international, interdenominational Christian ministry organization whose statement of faith embraces the inerrancy of the original biblical documents, the virgin birth of Jesus, the substitutionary sacrifice and bodily resurrection of Jesus, and eternal punishment or salvation. After four alternating five-minute speeches, so 20 minutes of debate, uh, we will open the floor for 20 minutes of question and discussion from the audience, which I will moderate, and you should direct questions to one or any of the four debaters. <coughs> After the 20 minute discussion period, I'll shut that down and turn the floor back over to the debate teams. One member from each team will get to give a <coughs> two and a half minute sum up or wrap up uh, summary. And then our happy uh, debate will be at an end. Uh, we'll begin with the opening speech by the affirmative team answering yes to the question from the free thinkers and inquirers. I am against religion because it teaches us to be satisfied with not understanding the world. It might be a little cliche to begin a debate on religion with the words of Richard Dawkins, but it makes the point that Corey and I will be making today. Are Christian beliefs damaging the world? Absolutely. The Word of God tells us to discriminate against homosexuals and women, to not just accept blindly, but to make a virtue of doing so. It is the fuel for atrocity after atrocity, murder after murder, and child molestation after child molestation. Christian beliefs teach us to see the world in black and white. This is how the world is. This is how the world will forever be. We are not to question nor reason. We are to accept what God says. The worst part about all of this is the way that Christianity not only allows for these things, but glorifies them. In Genesis, Abraham was a virtuous man for offering to kill his son for God. Two centuries later, or two centuries earlier, slavery was a virtue. Two generations ago, it was the rejection of interracial marriages that was the virtue. And today, the virtue is in opposing homosexuality and women's rights. They do it through love, we're told. Love the sinner and hate the sin, they say. These are the same words heard by women in the 17th century as they were burned at the stake for being witches. The, the worst of these is, is the love that comes from the Christian who sees himself as enlightened. He says, uh, you know, love the sinner, hate the sin again, that, that homosexuality is no worse than any other sin. They're telling us that homosexuality is no worse than lying, stealing, cheating. I can assure you that it is not. 
Of course, Christianity will eventually come around, even if it is kicking and screaming on the social issues. During the vote on Proposition 8, 85% of evangelical Christians voted yes to write discrimination into the California Constitution. Of voters whose opinion was swayed by the church, 94% voted yes. Of those who said that religion was the most influential part of their decision, again, 94% voted yes. Yet, just as with interracial marriage and the women's right to vote, history will be rewritten someday to make it seem as if Christianity was the cornerstone of the gay rights movement. Christ future Christian leaders will, will dig through the history to find the handful of Christians who dared to stand on the side of equality and make them out to be the mainstream deal. The danger of Christian beliefs do not end with social movements. They also contribute to a scientific illiteracy that prevails in this country. In a 2005 study, the United States ranked second to last among developed countries in the acceptance of evolution. <coughs> that makes us slightly better than Turkey and slightly worse than Latvia and Cyprus. It's a pretty exclusive company. Christi Christianity teaches us to believe in faith, not in evidence. It is this viewpoint that brings the Pope to tr teach of the dangers of condoms, that brings thousands of t parents not to vaccinate their children, and that allows children to die <coughs> as their parents solely pray over them. The rejection of science is not a new phenomenon. Robert Ingersoll tells us it was Ferdinand Magellan who said, quote, the church says that the earth is flat, but I know that it is round. For I have seen the shadow of the earth on the moon, and I have more faith in the shadow than in the church. Religion has always stood against science, as it must. Religions die when they are proved true. Science is the record of dead religions said Oscar Wilde. Finally, religion damages the world by fueling atrocities. Authoritarianism and hateful rhetoric are not without consequence. In 2004, over 4,000 Catholic priests had been accused of sexual assault. Would they have had the same power of cover-up if these children hadn't been taught that they were listening to the word of God? Would the, uh, without the religious pro-life movement calling Dr. George Tiller a mass murderer, would he himself have been murdered? Now, of course, we don't know the answer this, to this, but consider the words of the Southern Baptist Vice President Wiley Drake after the murder, who said, <laughs> quote, Would you have rejoiced when Adolf Hitler died during the war? I would have said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm glad he's dead. Words have consequences. The question we're asked today is, are Christian beliefs damaging the world? I think we can say that yes. Yes, they are. Stephen Weinberg once said, with or without religion, good people will do good things, and evil people will do evil things. But it is only through religion that good people will do evil things. Now, I, I think this is a huge oversimplification, but it makes an important point. No doubt you'll hear today about all the good that Christians are doing through, through charity and through uh, you know, volunteer work, and secular people can do that too. But hating gay sex because an ancient book tells you to? Rejecting science based on archaic dogma to make a virtue of it all? To believe these things may not require religion, but it certainly helps. Thanks, Trevor. I uh, want to say, first of all, oh. first of all, I'll turn on the microphone. Uh, second of all, excited to be a part of promoting civil dialogue on issues that we disagree because we agree on this one, um, but enjoy these guys. We've had conversations in the past and always been respectful, so thanks a lot, guys. Um, is Christianity damaging the world? In short, uh, I would say no. Uh, nothing is more helpful and nothing would hurt the world more to remove than Christianity. Christianity is not hurt, well... It depends on what you mean by Christianity. Uh, if by Christianity you mean a set of rules that we need to obey in order to be right with God, I would agree and say that this is not helping very much. But it's also not Christianity. At its core, uh, Christianity is not a set of rules that we need to obey. Um, that's a more moral de deism with the name of Jesus slapped on top. The core of Christianity addresses the core problem of all humanity and every person who has ever lived. Uh, Romans 3.23 says that all of sin falls short of the glory of God. Um, this is every person's central problem, and it's the uh, problem that Christianity answers, 
And I would add that Christianity is the only solution. Um, every person has sinned against God, separated themselves from him, not only now on this world, um, but eternally um, will be separated from God. I will be separated, would be separated from God eternally um, and be under his punishment for, for eternity. Um, but Jesus Christ is the man who lived on the earth. He is God who became a man, um, came to the earth, uh, lived a sinless life, the only sinless life that was ever lived. He then was murdered on a cross, being punished, not for his sins, um, but for your sins and for my sins. So he was punished in our place, taking the punishment that we deserved. He then rose from the dead, uh, and he, in rising from the dead, he, he uh, was, was victorious over sin and over death in such a way that if anybody would believe in him, they could have the opportunity to have their sins forgiven, be brought back into relationship with God, and, and enjoy an eternity with God, um, not, not opposed and separated from God. Uh, this is the central problem of all human, humanity, and from this problem, all other problems in the world stem. Now, even if, we, even if you're not comfortable to accept the tenets of Christianity, you have to realize um, and accept that Christianity fuels the most possible good in the world. Uh, at the core of Christianity is a God who gave himself as a sacrifice for us, and so it fuels a Christian to turn and then be generous, loving, and charitable to, towards other people out of gratitude for God. Um, Christianity enables charity towards not only um, those who deserve it, but those who do not deserve it, and toward our enemies. Um, this is a kind of generosity and a kind of charity that uh, secular humanism, um, for example, cannot, cannot lead us to. James 1.27 says that religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Um, true faith, true Christianity leads to charity. Um, humanism, uh, the charity that comes from humanism dries up towards Christians who we feel do, does, do not deserve it. Um, so in short, humanism gives less because it is grateful to God for less. Um, so Christianity, no, it is not harming the world. It's actually the solution to its problem. Um, and it is the best source of good in the world. Well, um, I'm sorry if I'm going to be flipping through my notes here, because uh, I have a lot of them. Um, I've often been accused by my uh, non-religious friends of being too uh, diplomatic and Normally, uh, I'd gladly accept these uh, allegations. Um, I think diplomacy has its place, um, but I don't think necessarily that diplomacy is the, is, is the place of a, a debate. Um, people come here to see both sides of the issue. So I would only ask uh, my, my friends in the audience to, uh, to not see my passion and mistake it for um, shrillness or, God forbid, vitriol. Uh, the question at hand is simple. Are Christian beliefs damaging the world? Not all questions have simple answers. This one does. Um, I think my partner is, has laid out quite, uh, quite soundly that Christianity, uh, Christian beliefs are damaging the world. And to look at something, uh, a ball that I think he might have uh, dropped, uh, I, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, sexual repression and the, uh, the consequences of it. Um, we, we have no way of knowing the psychological harm that has come to children by telling them that masturbation will make them blind. We, we, have, we have no way of, of, of calculating the, the, the exact number of STIs and unwanted pregnancies that happen as a result of abstinence-only sex education, a form of sexual repression often pushed by Christianity. Um, and then also going back to the, the social progress issue, I just, I, I wanna, I, I have a quick thought experiment for everyone. Um, could, you, could you please raise your hand if you know someone, maybe, uh, maybe an older family member or something like that, that's a little bit racist, but it's like, it's a product of their time, right? Okay, good. Well, not good, but you know what I mean. Um, so, okay, I, I think that one day, maybe 50 years from now, people will be talking about the, the relevant ethical issues of their day, right? And they might even be doing it in this room, in a debate like this. And someone's going to say, okay, I want you to think back, okay, to, that, to those people that you're embarrassed about because they're left behind by the morality of our time. And if you are against, uh, if you're against gay rights 